welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Garage. You can probably hear by the echo that I'm not in my normal area of the shop. I'm back here in what would be the paint booth. And the reason for that is I'm trying to work on the doors for the Jade Mustang. Now the Jade Mustang is a 68 coupe that I put in floor pans, torque boxes, converted the power steering, converted the power brakes, and it's going to have vintage air in it when it's finished. It also has a rebuilt 302, rebuilt transmission, a bunch of videos on the Jade Mustang. So if you haven't seen those, go back and check out the history of the Jade model or Mustang. In this video, what I want to do is try to strip out the inside of the doors, or what would be the inner part of the door, not the inside specifically, the inner structure, but the actual skin area of the doors. The reason for that, well, I want to get them in epoxy so that I can eventually get it in primer so that I can eventually get it in paint. Now, I've already pulled off the seals. That's pretty minor. You know, you can usually pull on them, they come off fairly easily. Or, you know, you can take a putty knife and break them loose, stuff like that. I've also removed the vent window and the glass. I probably should have done a video on that. I have not, but maybe I'll do a video when I put them back together so that you can see the process. So the glass is out, also the latch mechanism is removed, and other than that, I've left the window cranking mechanism still in the door, and uh, that's it. So I'm gonna work on stripping off the paint that's on the inner area of the door and also around the perimeter. I should also point out that this had that gooey black stuff all over the in, inner part of the door here where you would have the paper. And that's all that gooey stuff did is hold the paper on. I don't know that I plan to put paper back in. It really didn't do much. I think they would try to use it as a sound deadener maybe or keep some moisture out. I don't know, dust. But I may or may not put that back in. I do have brand new door panels for this car. So that'll come later. But at this point, I really just want to get this area is stripped. So to do that, I'm going to start with one of these Warrior discs. Now this is a fibrous type of disc that will wear away as you strip and it helps get into some areas that you normally couldn't get into very easily, but that's the plan. To use this and I may try some other things along the way, but this should be the primary thing that I use.
Okay, <laughs> I've done what I can with what's left of this wire wheel, but I'll have to get another one to finish out what I want to do. But you can see how well the combination of the Warrior disc, the wire wheel, the 3M finger wheel, all that together did a really good job of getting all that debris or old paint off of there, I should say. Now, this, <laughs> this is a bullet hole. This car was shot some time ago. I've already welded the hole that was there, but it came through the door and came into the interior. So, not much you can do to fix that because, you know, the texture, and I'm just going to putty over it. There's really no alternative at this point. I'm not going to replicate that, uh, that texture. So the rest of the door, you know, the wire wheel got down in this track and cleaned it up. And I may use some of that 3X chemistry chemical that I have just to treat this a little bit to make sure, you know, there's no issues with rust. You can see some of the original, well, I say original, braze that was on this door. There's still a few areas that will need attention to get cleaned up, but that's all pretty minor. For the most part, it looks pretty good. Now I still have this door to do, but I need to get another wire wheel and that'll come later. I wanted to show you what I've been using, just so you know. Again, these are from Harbor Freight. They may be available on Amazon, I don't know. I think they are. But this is a Warrior Fibers Disc and it says polycarbide abrasive wheel. Part number is 60571. And this brush <laughs> started off like this. <laughs> Obviously I've used it, abused it, worn it down, and I just replaced it today. And I stopped at Harbor Freight and picked up this brush. Item number 60494. So I'm going to do a little bit more with that brush because obviously there's a, a lot more material available for me to get into spaces. So <laughs> let me get that set up. Now at this point, I can use this brush to get into these spaces, the groove here, maybe even do a little bit more down at the pinch overlap, and just keep cleaning it up. Okay, even though this door is in really good shape on the inside, let's say, there is still some rust at this overlap where the flange rolls around on the main, or the skin rolls around onto the main inner structure. I want to treat that. Now, I've used this product before, I've shown it before. I don't know if this is still available or not. I've had people tell me it was, people tell me it wasn't, but I think I bought this at Summit Racing. And the way this works is you brush it on, keep it wet for about 15 minutes, and then you use water to rinse it off. And it'll leave you know, converted coating, let's say, um, that will allow it to take primer. Now I've done this before. I've shown it on, I think I've shown pictures on the Facebook page where I did it on the roof for Jade. And I'm going to try to get a better angle so you can see what the rust is and what it looks like after I use that product. So let me try to reset the camera. Now I don't know how good the image is, but you can hopefully see the pitting that is down in this area. So I'm going to put some of this 3X into a cup. Not much. 
because you can't put it back in to the bottle after it's been in the cup and contaminated. So whatever you use, keep it to a minimum, and then when you're done, you have to rinse it. So I'm just going to put some on this chip brush and apply it. Now you can see it, it's making it bold. It's kind of making the rust stand out. And of course this, this is, you know, it's going to be an unhealthy product. So have fresh air or a respirator or both. Uh, I'm keeping this away from my face while I do this and trying to demonstrate. So you can see it's doing something. <laughs> And that's basically all you have to do. And then, like I said, you come back and rinse it off with water. Now I have to keep it, maintain it being wet for about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna let the camera run for a little while and maybe I can get some imagery of it changing color, maybe. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, and now I have uh, just some water in a spray bottle. I'm going to soak that down. So definitely did something, right? Now, again, the way this is supposed to work is it stops the rust and neutralizes it and then you can coat it but you have to let it dry you don't want to be in a hurry let this air dry for a while a couple days you know there's other products out there I've, I've used this before and I'm I've been pretty satisfied with the results now this stuff it didn't clean up as well as it did on the roof of the Mustang but I think it's because of it being so pitted. So, you can see it's still, still pulling stuff out of it. Pull down here. So I'm going to let that dry because later it's going to get epoxy on it, but for now, that's all I want to do. Now for some areas, you're not going to be able to get that big brush in. So I've used these before, just little wire brushes on a quarter inch uh, end or shaft. You can put that into a 90 grinder. I try to use it in a drill just to keep the speed down a little bit. but you know, getting inside like the bolt holes for the or the, the indents for the screws that hold the latch on, you know, you can get in there. Like this little corner down here, really hard to get something in there, but That gets it out. Another area 
is this again little corner and no I'm doing this from this angle but from a different angle the brush is going to want to bite in better so The point being, you have to be creative. <laughs> Come up with different ideas and able to get into these spaces. All right, I think it's looking pretty good. However, I found a problem while I was doing this, and uh, it's actually not that uncommon. So I'm going to point something out here, because you really probably can't see it through the camera. Let me change the angle. But this hole and this hole are both cracked. Very common problem with these mount points for the latch. The reason for that is whenever they make these, a tool punches that hole and compresses and makes the cone. So it makes that shoulder very thin and it leads to cracks. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So I don't know if the camera can actually see it or not, but that crack is down here on this edge. This one looks okay. I don't see any evidence of a crack. And there you can actually see the crack runs out of the hole just a little bit. So I'm going to have to weld this. There you can see it better. The defined line of that crack. So, that's a pause at this point. Okay, I want to set up to weld both of these. And maybe you can see the crack looks a bit more pronounced from this angle. And this one kind of hard to see. I don't know if I get that enough, enough light on it, but it's there. So all I'm going to do is set up with the welder using point zero two five wire and just weld it. There's not much else you can do. It would be very difficult to weld this from the inside, you know, to try to hide it. At this point, I'm not worried about the texture. You know, it's not that critical to me. So I'm going to weld those up and blend the welds back down and try to make it look good. I want to try to reform these or reshape these just slightly. So I'm going to use, you could use a screwdriver. This is just a, a punch that I have. I'm going to put it in the hole and angle it upward so that it pulls that flange out just a little bit. Okay, I had to play with the heat setting a little bit. The heat setting is at two and the speed is right at one and a half. So as you can see, it was struggling just a little bit, but it's gonna work out just fine. I wanna move on and try to get some weld on the upper one, so.
Fresh one. <laughs> Now that those are welded, you can take a wire brush and just go over it. Just kind of help blend in any of the transitions. I think that'll be the end of this video. I know it's not the most exciting video, but it does give you some information or maybe some ideas as to how you can strip off the paint from the inside of these doors. I know there's always been a debate as to what kind of paint people want to put on, whether it's base coat, clear coat, or single stage, and I have not come to a conclusion myself as to what I want to use, but in my case, these doors, the internal area of the door, I'm not that worried about. I'm not a stickler for that crinkle finish. Not in this case, it's not a show car. Now what I might do, I might consider doing, is getting a vinyl wrap put on this later on so it does have some sort of texture to it, but I haven't decided yet. You know, these bolt holes, these bolt holes always crack, at least it seems that way. So, you know, you may have to address that with yours. And again, you're not gonna replicate that textured look it's just not that easy. I have seen people use uh, body filler and basically make an impression into the body filler that replicates that look. I'm not going to do that. It's just, again, not that critical to me. And along with that, this door also had the bullet hole in it. So it had a bullet coming in, like I said, from the, dry, from the skin and coming out in this area right here, which I had to weld shut and fill with filler anyway. So. But I still have to strip the other door and then I'll get them prepped so that I can put epoxy on them. Maybe I'll do a video on that process as well. And if I do come up with a paint that I like, that I want to put on these, I'll let you know. Because, like I said, there's been an ongoing debate as to what's the best choice and I don't even have an answer for that. But I'll come up with something and hopefully it works out pretty good. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I want to thank all of you who have been using Amazon to buy products through my page. Also, those that have become patrons, I appreciate that very much. And, of course, the Teespring t-shirts, they're available below the description box on any of my videos. So you can order the Joe Daddy's Mustang shirt, or you can order the Team Brooklyn Pony shirts, and a variety of other things that are on the page as well. So, again, thank you for even taking a look at that. So I'm not sure exactly what the next video will be, but there will be more videos coming, obviously. And when they are released, you'll know as well. So, <laughs> But again, that's the end of this video. So until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. I wanted to show you At this point, I can use the brush. Blah, 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 blah. Now, there are some areas. Oops. So I'm going to weld this, but I want to show you, if I can, how bad the crack is. So, if I can put the light behind it, it will show up. Different angle, I don't know. Kind of hard to. There you go. Now you can see that crack better. Maybe no light at all. <laughs> Alright.
that's going to be the end of this video. I know it's not probably what you're looking for, but... From a cosmetical approach. <laughs> Sandy, I didn't use any Sandy disc in this.